Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. We're having a celebration. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there and happy graduation to all the seniors out there. Um, May and, I'm not May, Amy and Keisha are on their way home on the interstate. They should be here within an, about an hour. So we have made a celebration day for them for graduating. Um, I am putting together a yellow homemade cake layer uh, today earlier. We are going to ice this with a homemade cooked chocolate icing, so we're going to go ahead and start this. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the stove top. Um, oh, I always do that, y'all. I think it was opposite on my old stove. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm using a pot that's a little bigger than what I normally make Mama's fudge in. All chocolate icing is the kind that your mom cooked on the stove top or your granny is fudge. That's pretty much what it is. So you're just icing your cake with fudge. So it's a homemade fudge though. It's totally different than a lot of these fudges people make today. So the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna melt your butter. And today I'm gonna to actually make a recipe and a half of mom's fudge because um, we want to ice a cake with it. This happens to be a stick of butter I stuck in the microwave. Kind of made a mess with earlier. Look at the cream that's dripping off the bottom of it into the pan. You see the cream, the white cream? All right, so we're going to use a stick and a half of butter because I am doing a half recipe today. Now, it's, is it a recipe and a half? Half? Yes, or, this okay. is a recipe so and a half. Double. Gotcha. So what I'm going to do is just not call out the ingredients, the, the amount. I'm just going to put them in here, and then y'all can look at the recipe. But remember, you have to make a little bit more if you're going to ice a cake with it. If you're just making fudge, it's fine. But if you're going to ice a cake, you need to make it at least a recipe and a half. So we're using a, we're using butter. The next thing we're going to put in is sugar. So we are going to use the original recipe is three cups of sugar and one stick of butter. butter. So we're going to put in three cups of sugar and then one and a half cups of sugar. Let's bring this over here. Now the key to making good fudge is um, making sure you bring it to a boil slow. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to medium for now. So that was three cups, and we're also going to put in a cup and a half. I normally mix my cocoa and my sugar in something. Let's do that right quick so um, we know that it won't, you know, get all nasty and have hunks of cocoa and it not be pretty good and mixed up. So we're going to do the cup and a half of sugar. And I'm going to mix up my cocoa in it because normally I would do that before starting. So now we're going to put in some cocoa and I say heaping tablespoons. One, two, three, four, five. I wonder girl, it'll about a half. So what I'm doing with this, instead of putting the cocoa directly in there, that wet environment, I am going to whisk it into this sugar, and that way all of the lumpy part goes away more. Okay, and we're also going to start adding our, let me turn this down a little, milk. So we're going to need two cups of milk, well, a cup and a half of milk. So we always use canned evaporated milk when we, use, when we make fudge. So we need another half. Actually, all I needed was one can. It's pretty much a can. How's that? You're doing it this way. And now I'm going to add my cocoa and sugar that I mixed up. I've still got butter melting in there. Mm 
And somebody asked if this is in the cookbook. It is in. It is in uh, my first cookbook. It is called Mama's. It is called Mama's Stove Top Fudge. Okay, but remember, everybody thinks they're always asking me, "Do you have a recipe for the cooked chocolate icing like my mama cooked on the stove?" And I always direct them to my fudge because pretty much that's what it is. Can you see it? There it is. Okay. So, you don't want to keep a lot of your utensils that you start out with because they got granulated sugar on them. And if any granulated sugar I'll let my fingers, gets into this fudge, once it's done, uh, it turns it right back to sugar. Okay? So, you want to make sure and... Um, Not let that happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this to a boil. Once it starts to boil, I am going to put a lid on it and I'm going to let it boil about three minutes. I'm going to take the lid off and we're going to check the temperature of it. And we'll post the recipe. Somebody asked about putting the ingredients on there. We'll post the recipe on the um, yeah on the video. Just remember, not, on the description. just remember, this is a recipe and a half to ice a cake. And I'll put that on there. That's sugar hanging off the edge. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to let this come up to a uh, slow boil. And then once it starts to boil, we're going to put a lid on it. And i got to find my lid in this pan. Mm -hmm. I think it's down here. Uh, let's see. And somebody asked about the cookbook. Cookbook is on www.collardvalleycooks.com. Yep. You can find it there if you want to go look. We have two cookbooks. So it's collardvalleycooks.com. www.collardvalleycooks.com. Type it. Collard Valley they Cooks. can search it in the Google and it comes right. right up too. True. If they just put in Collard Valley Cooks. Mm -hmm. um, so you can tell it's coming to a slow boil. You don't want to bring it to a real fast boil because you want your sugar to melt good, okay? So let it do its thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on it. Now, if you wanna know what kind of pan this is, this is a granite ware type cookware. I'm sure that it's made out of um, probably aluminum or steel, I don't know. I don't even know what it's made out of, but I do know it has a, a granite coat um, just like my brazer does. Now, it's not the same brand, um, and I do have some cookware that's made out of this granite type finish on our website. If you want to go under shop now and look under our cookware, you will find some uh, similar to this. I'm ch I chose it tonight because I'm making more than I typically would, or I would just use my regular sauce pot. But because I was making a little more than I typically make, then I use this one. I think it's probably a good thing to use a, uh, a uh, non-stick non -stick to do fudge, personally. Um, you can tell it's starting to really kind of come to a boil now. Now, once it starts doing this, and you can start see the bubbles all the way through, I'm going to turn the heat up, okay? And we are going to put the lid on it. We're going to turn the heat up, and we're going to rapid boil it for about three minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for three minutes. We do like the granite a lot better than the copper. Oh, yeah, the copper, yeah, didn't I just last. didn't like. Didn't but last. none of them last if you stick them in the dishwasher, not really. So you just have to hand wash stuff like the copper and the, anything that's nonstick. Now... And if you buy a nonstick that costs a lot of money, and I do have some of that on my cookware uh, site as well, if you want to spend and get the best they make, then you can put it in the dishwasher, you know. But if you're not going to pay a whole lot for a pan and it's nonstick, just know that it's not going to last but a couple of years. It's not something that's going to last you forever, like stainless steel does. But that's fine with me and Chris. We use them for a few years, and then we go get us a new one. As far as non-stick stuff. Most of the time we do buy the cheaper stuff for non-stick. 
And this is nice because it has a silicone lid. Those are really. Yeah, it's it is a nice pot. Now let's go over here and look at this while that's boiling. Um, this is our yellow cake layer. Um, you can tell that it does make a little tiny, you know, a crust around it when you flip it out. And so Mama would always kind of brush, you know, brush the crumbs off of it before she iced it. And the only difference in my white cake layer and my yellow cake layer is that I use the whole egg in the yellow. And, of course, you only use egg whites in a white layer. And the, the thing that I use the white layers the most for, Mama would always peel this off when we would eat it when we were kids. But the thing that I always use the white layers for is my coconut cake for Christmas every year. I have to make the white layers because they're just so pretty. So I'm just going to take all these off and start brushing them um, while we're waiting on this over here. And that way we'll have that part done. Because we're as soon as you make this icing, you have to ice the cake. You can't sit around and wait on it, okay? Or it sets up and then you can't ice anything with it. So there's my two were in the back and two were in the front. So uh, two were a little darker than the ones that were in the front. Chris is eating the crunchies. I could probably hear him crunching. So I mean, we're getting a good fresh cake. It can go. Let's see how many minutes we got. Twenty-three seconds left on that timer, so we got to get over there. Now, whenever you're making chocolate oatmeal cookies or fudge or anything that's chocolate type cooked icing, three minutes is usually your like your magic wand timing. But we're gonna check this and see how hot it is. I can't see it, I gotta turn it around this way. Okay, there it goes up. So you can see that thermometer move up. Maybe. I can. No. Well, I don't think can. They can see it now. So it needs to be about 250 degrees at a softball stage, okay? All right, here you go. Right now, it is a few degrees away from that. So whenever you use a candy thermometer, uh, they usually have a little hook on the back of them. You never want your thermometer to touch the bottom of your pan. I like this thermometer because it has a shield on it and it keeps you from worried about is the thermometer on the bottom. Um, so now all I have to do is lean it up in here and let it do its thing and this is boiling good. You can go around the edge and make sure all the sugars down in there are getting, uh, you know, hot and that you don't have any crystals on the sides of the pan while you're waiting on it to get to 250. Turn it around and let me get this back side. It's so much easier with a nonstick pan. I don't normally use my nonstick. I normally use my stainless steel. And with stainless steel, you may even have to use a little water to release it from the edge um, of the pan. But with this nonstick, it just slides right off. Marilyn Monroe asks, is the thermometer on the website? It's supposed to be, but somebody told me the other day that it's not, so I do need to double check for y'all and see what's going on with that. Getting really close. I'm going to turn it off because I don't want it to go too far beyond it. So I like to turn it off before it gets just a few degrees to the softball stage um, because it continues to get hot and cook in the pot. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, I really should have had out my big mixer, I guess. Um, I guess. Now Mama, I'm going to turn it back on, make sure it gets, it didn't get quite up to 250, so I'm turning it back on. Mama would put a little peanut butter in her fudge to help it set up, but now we don't want to put peanut butter in this because we're going to ice a cake with it. So we're not. But what I might do is um, add a few pecans to it. Do you care if I do that or do you think? 
Oh, Amy would. Gone, Amy. Amy likes them too, don't she? I don't know. They can eat. She her, likes them all. They can around. eat around the pecans. She likes them all around. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're turning it off, and we're gonna get it ready to beat up. All right. So the best thing to do is use a mixer and cool it down with it. So we're gonna pull this over here just so y'all can watch. Well, back in the day, the women used to beat it, beat it, beat it, you know. But um, we don't have to do that anymore because we have mixers. My goodness. So I'm gonna pour it into here. They're in the dishwasher. Oh. Show them my uh, decorating bags. Chris? I really don't know what you're talking about. She did decorate this in here for their uh, for them getting home for graduation. Okay. Oh, you mean the decorating bags? For the... Yeah, that's yeah those are filled with buttercream right there. Yeah, we made some buttercream to decorate with. All right, here we go. We're just gonna beat go. this up. Okay, so we're gonna cut it off a little bit so we can actually cut. Okay. Somebody was asking about these bowls, whether they could break putting something real hot in it. They could if they were really cold first, but my bowl wasn't cold. It was sitting over there next to the stove. When I say cold, I mean cold, like it's almost refrigerated cold. And these are Pyrex, right? Yeah. That's starting to sit up a little bit. Get a little thicker. Now, when, when you see those 10 layer cakes made, this is what they use. But their cake layers are, they put their cake layers in the oven and they only put like a cup and a half of batter in there. And they bake them all separate. And then they use this while it's really thin like this and put in between the layers, okay? But I'm letting mine get a little bit thicker than this. Yeah, and traditionally these are tall cakes. That is true. Somebody asked if it would be a tall cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's, especially if it's 10 layers, yeah. it would. But they're 10 thin layers when they yeah. do them. Yeah, I'm going to put some pecans in this now. Uh, my pecans are here. We'll throw a few pecans in it because we can. Right? That's what I like to say. Why did you do that? Because I can. 
Um, they're in pretty big chunks, Dave. Pretty big chunks. Maybe the chocolate will still be warm enough to toast them a little bit. I doubt it. The cake is a full recipe, but Tammy's recipe is a little more than a normal. Yeah, all of my cake layers, when you make them homemade, yeah, they're, homemade. They're, they're made with at least two and a half uh, cups of flour. So it's too much batter to put in two eight inch layers. You have to make at least three layers. Um, or you have to reserve a little bit of the batter. So I made four layers today, and you can tell this two and a half cake batter uh, made, I can show you how tall that is. You know, four layers, um, and they're all about that deep. I didn't measure them, but I just eyeballed them when I put the, the dough in there. But um, it's a tall cake, and I don't want it to fall apart. So this is kind of like, um, I don't know if I can use this thing, if I'm gonna use that. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is it. Now, if we'd have put peanut butter in it and it were fudge, it would already be setting up. But, you know, you don't really want to put peanut butter in your cake. Uh, Not this cake. No. My kids are not crazy about peanut butter. Now, I love peanut butter. And you can tell by looking at my bowl right quick, you can see that it's getting thicker on the edge right there. So, it sets up as it cools down. Okay, so if you had these layers in the refrigerator um, or freezer and then you iced them, it would work even better. This is going to be a tall cake right here. But when you're talented like me, <laughs> you can use it. You can do anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had several people ask me to make a 10 layer, yellow layer chocolate homemade icing cake. This is it, but with four layers, because I am not taking the time. I'm sorry, guys, because it's always men that ask me that. I am not taking the time to bake 10 layers in the summer and heat my house up, okay? Um, to me, it's got enough icing on it just like this, but this is what you do. See how thin this is? That's how you can ice 10 layers and really not get too much icing on them. There's no such thing as too much icing. Oh, there is to me. Not to me. Y'all see how that's looking? Pretty straight. Pretty Our, good oven, ain't it? Our oven's pretty level. It is. It looks pretty good, don't it? We didn't even have to shave these. So, if you're not good at icing it, just use a spoon like I'm doing and just pile it on there, okay? And let it run down it, have if them, that's what you need to do. Yeah, have them people decorate cakes now, that's about what it looks like. I know. Or, or just like that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and they say it's, then they say it's decorated. Yeah. Now see, it's already starting to set up. Um, so now you're gonna watch me do the sides and it's not easy, but we're gonna do it to it. I could beat this up a little bit more, let it get a little bit thicker to do the sides, but I'm not, because it's thickening up in the bowl as we speak. You can see that it's starting to get thicker in the bowl. So this is a cake 
that you have got to, you know, put together when you make the icing. You can't make the icing and then come back later and think you're going to put it together. The easiest way to do this for real get on is side. to pour it oh. and pull it down the sides. It's just the easiest way to do it. Just stand like right in there, Chris. Right here. Is this good lighting? Yeah. Can they see good? Mm -hmm. And so you're just going to push it down and grab it and spread it. Push it down, grab it, and spread it. Just like that. Push it down, grab it, and spread it. Now that's a good looking cake. Is it not, y'all? Holy smokeolas, as I say. Woo! This is one of them days. Y'all, I hate to be this way. But when I make stuff like this, I look at it and I say, boy, that woman can cook. I'm serious. Do you know how many people could never do this? I mean, they just couldn't. But now, if y'all watch me enough and y'all get my tips and y'all listen to me and you pour it on the top and pull it down the sides like that, you'd be surprised what you can do. Um, Gina Badeau, give us another $2. I Here have been four, four doing this for a very long time, icing cakes. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Gina. So. It is hard to ice a cake now. Woo, not for me. She makes it look easy. It is easy. Once you get the hang of it, y'all just need to practice. And y'all need to, you know, do, do it in the steps that I do it in. But is that not pretty now? It's already setting up. So if you want to swirl it or do anything, you better do it now or forever. Hold your peace or whatever. Because this is, you know, it's going to take its shape. Pretty, ain't it, y'all? Now let's clean it up. Let's eat some icing off the counter. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. You any pecans down there? Mm-hmm. You eating all of them? Mm-hmm. Oh, one. There's one. Mm-mm-mm, good. All right, I'm gonna mix my hands, clean up the sides of this plate, and pick it up. Tell y'all why. We are going to make some hot dogs on the grill. Have some potato chips. And celebrate. And she's going to take this buttercream and... Oh, well, I guess I can do that right quick. Decorate on it a little bit. Chris, I about forgot. Y'all, I'm so old, I forget everything. And I'm not even old, but chemo, because I'm a cancer survivor, no, I don't have it now, but um, it affects you. And they say it ages you 10 years, and I believe it, because I act like I'm... I don't act 51, I act 61. Health-wise. All right. Ta-da! All right, let's put their name on it. I am going to put... What happened to my rose nails that was like here? Uh... It's just gone. What? Off the rose nail. Is that right here? Oh, I put it in here. Somebody asked me, how does it taste? It tastes like it did when you were a kid and you went to church and they had dinner on the grounds and some lady made one of them cakes. cooked ice and ten layer chocolate cakes and everybody all made sure they got a piece of that. That's what it tastes like. Just like old fashioned. Chocolate cooked icing. Their school colors are blue, red, and white. And I don't want to do red because it's hard to mix up. So we're just having uh, blue. Lord, Joe Dare says nobody at her church was that talented. All, all right, let's put an order around it. To, this is just this. a little rosette. All you gotta do is swirl it. So easy. Let me get on that side of you for this. So they can see that. And the only reason, I know I'm covering up a pretty cake already, but it's a celebration, so I have to make it look like it's a celebration. Jake Dragon. 
donated one dollar. Thank you, Jay. Thank Dragon. you, Jay. Never heard of Jay Dragon. Have you been watching us before? Yeah. All right, we're going to do a regular border this direction just because we can. It is a tall cake. Somebody said that is a tall cake. Lucia said that's a tall cake. All my homemade layers uh, give you plenty of batter to work with because I don't like a cake that's, I mean, Nowadays, when you go to the store and get a cake, they just get littler and littler and littler. And the cake mixes get smaller and smaller. So if you make one of my cakes, you're going to have plenty of cake. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just going to put a blue thing in every other. How much would you say that would cost at a bakery? This? A bunch. Ah. Depends on where you live. No kidding. Half of this cake. They would sell the amount that was in half of this cake probably for 30 bucks. So it's probably, I'm serious. For If I were making this for a bakery, I could probably make, you know, and get a lot more out of it. I'm going to put a writing tip out of, in here okay. and write for them. Somebody said you should open a bakery. That's too much work, guys. We're, oh, yes. We're past doing all that work. I did bakery work when I was growing up through college. Been there and done it. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't have my own bakery, but I worked in a bakery. All right. So, how do you? what are you supposed to put for graduation? Happy graduation uh, or graduation 2020? Or? Uh, congrats grads or something like that. Or You don't uh, think I should put 2020? Grad? Yeah, 2020. Congratulations or something. You can't say congratulations, but it's too much. You can just probably just put 2020 on it. And it'd be good enough. Tasmania, Australia. I was watching from Tasmania, Australia. And I know somebody was watching from South Africa, I think, earlier. That's the first Tasmanian we have had. That I know of. All right, now we're going to put the writing on the blue tip and go over it in blue so you can see it. This was a long video, but it's fun. And so, 20. Lord, this icing's thin. 20. Congrats. Okay. Mm. Homemade cooked chocolate icing on our homemade yellow cake layers celebration Sunday for Father's Day and graduation. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.